So if you've clicked the video, you're probably familiar with this device, which is a film retriever or picker. This is used to pull the tongue back out of a roll of 35 mil film, which has been uh, rewound all the way in, whether it's for the purpose of getting it ready to load on a reel for developing that roll or to pull the tongue back out when you've accidentally rewound it or something else. It's just a really handy device to have if you shoot film. I've been using them for years, but I recently found out that certain retrievers can actually cause light leaks. And I was getting light leaks on the first frames on certain rolls of film. And it was starting to happen more and more. Now, just a disclaimer, these don't in general cause problems or light leaks. I just think that some of them go faulty or they warp over time or there's certain brands. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video to put that out there to get your experience, find out if anyone else was having uh, their picker starting to cause light leaks or if it always caused light leaks. Uh, hopefully this might help you out if you looked up light leaks and film picker because when I was searching for it, I couldn't really find much. Anyway, the background on this is I've owned it for a few years. I had a different one before that. I always found that previous one a little bit better. Maybe it was the Matin, I'm not sure. This one here is the AP or a copy of the AP. I've owned it for about three or four years. As I start to develop more film and use this for the rolls where I would actually pull the tongue out because you can either crack the can open or you can pull the tongue out. Sometimes I like pulling the tongue out so that I can reuse these cans for bulk loading my cinema film or something else. And it just makes it convenient to have that uh, film tongue pulled out so you can pre-cut it and just have it ready when you go into the dark bag to develop film. So there's multiple uses for it. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's something that I use every now and then. So the more I would use it, the more I started to find uh, that I would get these subtle light leaks as I've been showing you across the first few frames. And it started off fairly subtle to the point where I just ignored it and thought maybe I just loaded the, the canister in really bright sunlight and it was just piping through from, from that loading process. Then I noticed a pattern that it was only happening on rolls that I would self-develop and only was happening on rolls where I was using this. I started to suspect it and change my technique to try and squeeze the the felt there to make sure light wasn't piping through. And then it stopped happening. And I thought, all right, well, that was it. And then um, again, it was intermittent. I didn't really shoot too much film for about a year in 2023. But then recently I went on a big trip that you might've seen some of the videos on the channel from all the vlogs. And I'd shot a whole bunch of black and white film and developed that in batch. And then that light leak was showing up on almost every roll. It had been getting worse leading up to this trip. And I unfortunately decided to use the film picker for all those black and white rolls I developed. So yeah, light leaks you're seeing on the screen were happening, but they weren't happening on color rolls. They had never been really happening on any color rolls that I dropped off at a lab. So it caused me to experiment and do a proper control test to figure out whether this was causing it. I used the can opener for some rolls and this developed them together. I even tried using this in the dark bag. And then long story short, it turns out this was definitely causing those light leaks. So has anyone else watching had similar light leaks that only happen on the first few frames? Do you use a film picker to, when you're developing film or retrieving uh, you know, rewound rolls for reshooting? Which brand do you recommend? Do you notice that weird bit of separation? Because I know these tongues are meant to curl close to each other and be sort of flush. And the unfortunate thing is that I kind of ignored it for too long and thought, whatever, it's just the first few shots. But you know, sometimes your best shots are on the first few frames of the roll. So I shouldn't have really been ignoring it, even though, yeah, I just did. I got lazy and then I, I took this long to do a proper controlled test over multiple rolls to figure out that this was definitely causing it. So sure, I could just use this in the dark or in the dark bag, but then that kind of defies the purpose of it. So I'm going to buy a new one. I want to know which ones you recommend. I've seen the Matin one made in Korea. I think I've owned that before. As soon as I get a new one, I'll chuck this one out. I, I think it's just a bad copy or it's worn out or it's warped. Uh, there's another brand I saw called Wigo something with a metal part. So yeah, feel free to give your recommendations or experience in the comments. And uh, if I learn anything new, I'll, I'll also just um, come back and comment on this video. Anyway, my main aim is that this might help someone out there who's had a similar experience because when I looked it up, I couldn't find much except for just a couple of forum entries about it. And uh, yeah, it could save you some valuable frames because I have had roles where the best shots were actually the first one or two shots. 
So anyway, I know this video is a little bit random and content on the channel has been a bit slow over the last couple of weeks, but I have been working on quite a few things. And the next video on the channel will be my review of the little Thipoc collapsible Eureka 50 mm lens, which I've been having a lot of fun shooting and testing, uh, you know, multiple rolls of film on this. So I've started working on that video. That should be out by the next weekend. I've got more coming up. And yeah, let me know if there's anything that you would like to see. Thanks for watching this one. And again, I hope it helps someone if it sits there on the internet for a while and it helps you confirm that your freaking film retriever has been creating light leaks on your film. Be careful, don't ignore light leaks for too long like I did. Yeah, that's all I have. So I'll see you on the next one.